theme of an article that we ran this week titled The Building Blocks of Organizational Psychology, written by a brand new QD contributor, Kelly Graves, who's the CEO of Internal Business Solutions. Kelly is a consultant and change agent who uses his background and training in psychology to help organizations work through the communication issues that may be preventing them from achieving their highest levels of success. So to chat further with us about these ideas, we're now very pleased to welcome Kelly Graves to the show. Kelly. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Welcome. You guys are a kick in the pants, yeah, you know we, that? We try to be robots. Yeah. You know, I was we, sitting over there like, oh, I can get in with these crowd all just fine. Well, we cover it all. All three, of our, all Pretty three much. of our viewers really <laughs> like us. Right. That's right. Thanks. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Okay. <laughs> well, Kelly, let's start by, by talking about fear, uh, which really needs something to be addressed uh, before change can happen. So how do you uh, overcome or eliminate fear uh, in an organization, uh, especially the fear of change? You know, that's an interesting topic because it's you have to acknowledge the obvious you can't eliminate fear if, if I put a gun to your head you're gonna be fearful if my boss comes in and berates me I'm gonna be fearful and so the only way to really do that is to acknowledge it and when a person is in a meeting and there is fear when the leader sees that senses it then he or she must acknowledge it and say I mess I'm messing something here you know I, I can see that I'm not getting across my point to you, or you're shutting down, the group is shutting down, and right then and there, you may not know what to do, but you have to acknowledge it. Do, 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 you, think, do you think managers don't recognize fear, or they feel like there's something wrong with acknowledging it, or putting that person on the spot, or I mean, what, what's actually going on there? I think that historically, our technology has made huge advances in terms of computers and all these other things and even though we give lip service to communication we're really in the archaic ages of that so I think um, when I was growing up people always said leave your feelings at the door come in shut it off and move in but psychologically you can't remove the relationship from the relationship I'm gonna feel certain things mm -hmm. and so I think that managers try to legislate fear out don't feel it, let's move on. Get to the task at hand. And nothing could be further from the truth because as you're saying that, I'm shutting down. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have to take the exact opposite tack and acknowledge it. And I dealt with this just the other day. There was a uh, very bright manager, very, very intelligent, PhD, working in a high-tech industry, and he knew the steps on how to um, make connection with the team. And, but he missed them and he was 10 steps ahead. By the time I got there, he, but Kelly, I touched base with them and I, I asked questions, I did all these things. And I said, but you didn't pace yourself. You went through the steps, but you didn't draw out from them. So you were 10 steps ahead instead of a half a step ahead and drawing out. So that's where we have to continually touch base with the person, with the team, with the organization and make sure that they're getting you know, the, the trust, and we're actually getting it, and there's a dialogue back and forth. Mm -hmm. well, what are the situations, what are some of the scenarios in which management needs to be aware of a potential breakdown in organizational communication? What, what do they need to be on the lookout for? Every form of communication that you have, you need to be aware of message sent, message received. Not just the content of the message, but the underlying dynamic between person A and person B. Most all situations that I ran into started out small and they were allowed to fester and statistically seven years before they call in somebody like me. They call in what I call the MBA consultants and we need a, a different model. This, you were talking about models earlier mm -hmm. with Jeff uh, Dewar. Dewar. Mm -hmm. And it's fascinating because that's exactly what we're doing here is we're taking different business models and, and applying them. And it's not the business model that's right or wrong. It's how we draw out the people. So you can't approach it from the outside in. You have to approach it from the people and draw them out. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you know? How do you know when, when team members are, are, are buying in to a change? Mm -hmm. and, and on the flip side of that, what are the signs and the signals that people are throwing up resistance and not buying in? Perfect. Right now, the three of us are dialoguing. Mm -hmm. We're, you know, there's, there's nodding, there's eye contact. Um, even a person that is super intellectual, let's take two physicists and they're, they're very intellectual, they can still know if you're getting my point, mm -hmm. okay? 
Contrary to that, or the exact opposite of that, is where you can feel it shutting down. I'm asking for your opinion, but no one's giving it. In this example I just used, the manager said, I've asked them 10 times, 100 times, mm -hmm. are you getting it? No answer. And I can tell you right then, we have a trust issue. We don't have an intellectual issue. We don't have problems in, in, the, in the team. We have a dynamic in terms of the trust. And so that's where we have to really draw it out of the people. So getting back to your original question is we have to constantly be aware of are we drawing out the answers to the people? Are we engaging them? Are we involving them? Well, I mean, it, to me it sounds like you really and this, I guess, is common sense, is no different than what we do, or should be doing, I guess, outside of work, when we're yes. dealing with our spouse or our children or our friends. Precisely. I mean, so basically what you're saying is that we should be doing the same thing at work, in our, biz in our work relationships, maybe, as we do outside yes. of work? Very I mean, are there, so. are there some certain lines you don't cross over? I mean, what, what's... Human beings are human beings, and how we react, and we shut each other down, or we draw each other out. And what I hear consistently, and I know where I'm hitting the target, is when my when I coach somebody and they come back to me a week or two later and they go, God, I'm applying this at home with my kids, with my spouse, because human dynamic is the same. And what we're trying to do in business because of the stress and because of the pace that we have to endure, we have to say, oh, let's forget about this touchy feely crap. Let's, let's get on with the, the task at hand mm -hmm. and nothing could be further from the truth. What I have to do is help people slow down, forget the task for a minute. Let's forget the hundred things that we have to do in eight minutes. And let's focus on the team, the group. And this isn't touchy feely, this is drawing it out of the people. And so when I go into an organization, the genius is there. Whether we're talking about a family, a two person organization, or a 500 person organization, the genius is there. Leadership is not drawing the genius out of the people. And I attribute that to trust and communication. If I can build the trust and the communication, I can get the best out of this team, and then we can get to the task at hand. But if we don't have the trust, the task at hand will always falter. We see it in sports teams. We see it in any kind of dynamic. You take a, uh, a, an all-star team, and even though all five players are fantastic, the NBA team that, that won the championship will destroy the all-star team is because they understand each other. They communicate without communicating, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you, you talk in your article, you have a, a nine-step process that you developed mm -hmm. for, for change and helping manage change in organizations right. that you developed through some, some, broad, uh, some broad, broad psychological backgrounds. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. In, I remember that, that organizations are systems. Individuals are systems, we're complex. And so when I was going through my training, I started looking at how am I gonna apply psychology to business in the way that I think it needs to be done. And I was introduced to Ludwig von Bertalanffy. Mm -hmm. He was a uh, Austrian biologist and he came up with general systems theory back in 1923. I believe it was 23, 29. And, um, at the time, the scientific community was focused on individual understanding of, of everything from biology to science, and so they were looking at things individually. And what he did is he sat back and go, what are the commonalities between these? Much like Jeff's article that you spoke about earlier. <laughs> sure. Okay, so we know that if you know, a plant is similar to an animal when you start looking at the biological makeup, then we can take that inference and draw it to an individual is a system. A group of three or four people is a system. An organization of 500 or 5,000 is a system. The same principles will play out faster, slower. And that's why you have to really understand the individual to draw them out. You have to understand the culture and the dynamic of the organization to draw them out. Some are faster, some are slower. And even with professional change agents or professional CEOs that are, that are change agents, they can hit a lot of things perfect, but their pacing can be off unless you go get in and out of a lot of organizations. So I'm used to going from turbocharged tech companies to bureaucracies where you, know, you go from 120 miles an hour to eight. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, come on, you know, it's <laughs> Unthrottle it, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, go ahead, Kelly, And so, 
in applying this theory, I thought, wait a minute. I looked at the different theories of change, and some people have four, some people have seven, some people, you know, there's all these different ones. And the model that I came up with was, um, was important because it had the various factors that I think were required. The most important were, is the first one, awareness. You have to be aware of your um, uh, strengths and weaknesses. If we can hold the mirror up and say, I'm good in this area, but you know what? I'm pretty bad in this area. And even more so, do you know that there's a blind spot that we're all aware of, but you're really not? Okay, I'll listen to you. So that's, that's the first one. If we can't get past awareness, we're dead in the water. We can't move on. The next most important one in the nine are number six, is number six. And that's where you hit the wall, okay? And this is where you've been making progress, but all of a sudden, you're not making the progress and that's where you have to struggle through. And we experience this, people experience it in dieting, dieting. They lose that first six or seven pounds, then the real work starts. If we're learning any kind of new technology, it comes easy, then we hit the wall. The same thing in individual or organizational change. We can make progress and then we get to the struggle. And in uh, organizational change there is you know the four steps that most all college people are aware of but they don't truly understand and that's the team forms and then it storms it has to storm and then it norms and performs so storming is a is a very natural normal part of any relationship two or two thousand what we have to learn is how to learn to struggle get through that so we get to the norming and that's what we have to do is teach each other how to struggle, how to argue about the topic, not you and me, the topic. And then we get past that, and that we don't, we don't stab each other and we take things and it becomes political and all that. Yeah. Okay, that's what destroys. Well, Kelly, you know, we could talk about this yeah, for, we're gonna be, for we're all day. <laughs> we're doing more, too. No, thank we're gonna you, thank you. We're gonna be having Kelly back. Yep. Yes, we'll have you back right. on the show. Uh, we, we wanna set this up as a series, so we'll be talking about some of these other, other elements of, uh, of organizational change. So, Kelly, thanks for joining us on the show today. And we'll, thank uh, you, thanks we'll, for having we'll, me. We'll this see was, you soon. This was fun. Thank you, Kelly.